Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-73. When last we listened in, the party had had a harrowing experience against a bone naga after attempting to rescue a pair of twins. The party had to squeeze down a tight shaft and quickly became separated as it took time for each member to fit in the small tube. By the time they were reunited, one of the twins, Mori, was dead from his wounds. With the known enemies defeated, the party, along with the professional miner Geldor, discovered that they were in a jeweled chamber. We rejoined them as they take in their surroundings and began to loot the room. By the old gods and the new, I have never seen such beauty in my life, boomed an ecstatic Geldor. He and Bulger took in the beautiful encrusted murals running along the edges of the high ceiling, as well as the colorful tiles on the domed ceiling. The rest of the party was scouring the dark areas of the room to confirm that there were no more aggressors in the area. Once completed, everyone moved back to the center of the room. A group of miners approached from the hallway, but Geldor ordered them back. Seeing the shattered bones of the large naga, the miners had no hesitation in leaving quickly. The sobbing noises of Sandal lessened in volume, indicating that the other workers had escorted the child up and out of the complex. Tyra approached down the hallway and cleared her throat. <clears throat> uh, Geldor, we have taken Sandal back up to the surface and we are working on removing her brother as well. What would you like for us to do down here? The woman couldn't help but take in the painted murals and the remains of the last opponent and shifted nervously as she looked around. Geldor looked at the party members and noticed that Sister Elaine was busy administering healing. Thinking for a moment and looking to Fargus, who stared blankly at him, he responded, Time, my dear. Give us some time. We will come out shortly after we gather our thoughts. Tyra bowed and her footsteps faded into the distance. The adventurers came up and stood shoulder to shoulder next to each other and faced the gnomish businessman. <clears throat> well, there, uh, <clears throat> there seems to be a lot of uh, wealth down here. Uh, I suppose a uh, fair disbursement among all parties should be considered as well as... Uh, but he stopped short as Sister Elaine approached him. The large human looked deeply at him, causing him to become concerned as was her intent was on his head. She reached into the folds of her robes as he became rigid, fearing that the Delvers would turn on him for the wealth. A loud tearing was heard and the cleric reached up for Gelder's face and he became quite pale. The human female began to dab his forehead with a piece of her robe. You've got quite a gash at the hairline. I have some salve that should help you. Please, continue your speech. The soft handling of the gnome's face felt good as he didn't even realize he was injured. He attempted to stutter and stammer but went silent under the care of Sister Elaine. Fargus waved his fingers to the group and each member moved off into different directions and began to take an inventory of the items in the chamber. The ranger moved up, standing next to Sister Elaine. The pair of humans hovered over the squat gnome as he shifted from foot to foot. Sister Elaine told him to stop squirming and she finally finished up with the medical intent and stepped back. The ranger nodded his head in approval at the healer's work and then began to explain what the party was doing. Geldor, we can go ahead and take inventory uh, with you double checking our work. There seems to be more than enough wealth here for all concerned. As for uh, this, this is part of your mine. You'll be taking the lion's share. Uh, we ask that we receive an amount commensurate to what you think is fair. <clears throat> I think we need to have uh, t t Tyra uh, return with scales and accounting material. Sacks and boxes would also be helpful. I assume you have ladders or other elevation equipment that we can use to get the gems spanning the ridge? The gnome stood slack-jawed at the dissertation by the large man and couldn't speak. Fargus and Sister Elaine looked at each other, then back to Geldor, who stood silent. Sir, is that acceptable to you? asked Fargus. 
The gnome was still puzzled but nodded his head in agreement. The ranger nodded to him and went down the hallway with a torch yelling for Tyra. Words finally came to Geldor's lips as the cleric began to walk away. You... you aren't going to take it all? He stammered out. It was the cleric's turn to be puzzled as she turned around to address the miner. Take it all? This is your mine, not ours, Commander Miner. We only ask for a fair share based on how we have helped you. She began to speak further, but Lady Irena called out to her. I need your clerical expertise if you have a moment, yelled out the mage. Sister Elaine excused herself, leaving the squat gnome to look around at the other delvers as they looked, but did not touch the treasure in the area. A few minutes later, he noticed that the party members filtered over towards the mage and cleric to see what had captured their entrance. Geldor moved over to the group as Bolger and Karina cleared space for the mining magnet. Lady Irena stood next to Cape Silvertongue, who stood next to a two-foot-tall golden coffer covered in sigils. The elven woman spoke, stating, I'm fluent in several languages, but this is not one of them. Cabe is under the impression that it is some kind of burial container. The bard spoke next, pointing out that he had leaned on the tabernacle and must have pushed his secret switch. The tabernacle opened and the golden item rose out of the center of the marble table. Sister Elaine peered at the expensive looking container and attempted to figure out what the meaning was behind the markings. This mark here, as she pointed, indicates that the man was a cleric. The title of canon indicates he was a high ranking member of his order, whatever it was. This marking, I believe, is the individual's name, Omar. A clattering noise at the entrance to the room was heard and the group whirled around to see Fargus and Tyra. The female had dropped writing materials on a small scale. Did you say Canon Omar? exclaimed the woman loudly. The group was puzzled, but Sister Elaine nodded in acknowledgement. Tyra spit on the floor three times and made strange motions involving her heart and her head. Fargus was as puzzled as his cohorts were and just looked at the woman who began to back out of the room but was caught by the ranger. Geldor walked over to the pair, followed by the others. Tyra, do you know who this Canon Omar person is? The woman was obviously fearful and shook her head in affirmation. Only by reputation. He was known as the Poisoner of Sedgwick. He was well known for his use of toxins. The group went silent and Bulger quickly began to wipe his hands on his pants because as Karina just now. stared Thank at her eyes. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.